Hey guys, got a lot to talk about today. Woohoo, Nilly. We had another high speed solar wind event, just about like clockwork, right after midnight again. I'm going to show you that in a second. But check this out. Look at these field lines in front of the earth. Never seen it like that before. Seen them reaching out about to here, maybe, with these little feelers. But here they all are. Wow. Gotta be pretty big planet out here to be extruding all those field lines toward the earth. And uh, there's the next clip. Four minutes, 11.19.05. You can see them building in. We get the void there, so that's when uh look like Earth is balling up and making a uh, plasma discharge happen. This is what it looks like on here. <clears throat> you can see we get the chevrons and Earth's closing some field lines, but you can see we don't have a lot of field lines there. And you can see here even a couple hours before, looking pretty thin, looking strong there. I'm talking about these polar cap field lines in the black streamers that stream away from the planet. And usually the solar wind just rides along. The outside of them. You can see we're getting a lot of solar wind pressure. There's some more magnetic field lines from that big planet out in front. There's Nemesis trying to grab us. All these blue IMF field lines coming up the middle here. And then extended wing or chevron shape. Earth closing again back there. By closing, I mean these polar cap lines loop back around and close with the Earth in order to garner enough energy to extrude all this plasma. That's at 603. Basically, we got constant stream of plasma. Or a constant buildup of plasma behind the planet. It's not going away. <laughs> Check that out. Is that Superman? Or did Elvis just leave the building? I don't know. Maybe that's Atlas. The mythical Atlas that was holding up the planet. Well, yeah. whatever he is, he's gone. I'm just joking, of course. But you can see how the human mind likes to go to make make anthropomorphic shapes out of things like clouds and stuff people see <clears throat> in the sky. Mind will play tricks on you. Well, that's pretty weird looking, I would have to say. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me. So we'll just pull this through. That's when we had the solar wind event. Began on uh, double lot 11, actually. But you can see even before that, prior, things are pretty well blown. Look at this huge pressure gradient in, in the red in front of the planet. And that's all coming from solar wind being accelerated although it is a little bit elevated it's up over around 500 so we're getting the extra solar wind speed from the sun and it jumped up pretty quick around about 2200 it started going up then we had that little missing time in there which is a data gap and it steadily climbed up 
into the low 500s. If you look at Enlil, they pretty much predicted that. So there's the radial velocity on Earth, which would be measured by the a satellite and discover satellites out here at L1 Lagrange point. So that checks elevated solar wind. You can see we were still running a pretty straight up connection with Nemesis most of yesterday. And pretty much all of yesterday. Can't tell exactly what happened in there. There's a gap on ACE as well. And then you can see the interplanetary magnetic field between the Earth and the Sun and Nemesis and the big planet and the Earth and the Sun and Nemesis and the Earth and the big planet and the Sun. It's getting all jumbled up. Big planet or planets because here's the last MLSO run. <clears throat> A little bit shy of two minutes on these time lapses. Running hmm, A good uh, six hours on here. Here's the number of so a little over a hundred loops, but I mean, look at these things. They're planets, in my opinion. Celestial bodies, planets, whatever. They're big and they're moving. You can see even this little six, seven hour time lapse. Look how much this thing has moved. So they're getting bigger and they're showing more movement. So those are a couple of indicators for me anyway. That they're getting closer to the Earth. <clears throat> and then we get these data gaps showing up. The one yesterday on ACE was was broken at like an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. It was all broken up. But now we got straight up back to a nine-hour gap. Really, more than nine hours. Say nine-and-a-half-hour gap. Data gap on ACE. So, uh, and I noticed that these phi angles been a little bit different on ACE as opposed to uh, Discover. I don't know if I have enough time to get into that. Basically though, it's probably, be, in my opinion, it's because there's like a saddle area up here. And I'm not sure how large it is, but probably pretty large and they both rotate around this saddle area. so. <clears throat> and of course, ACE's instruments are 20 years older than Discover's, so that could have some of, some play on why their data streams don't exactly match, especially on the especially on the phi angle. But anyway, let's get back to here, I guess. Well, let me show you geospace real quick. So the last three or four hours, this is the pressure indicator. See, the pressure's getting stronger. It was not as strong yesterday. I don't think I showed that to you. I ran out of time. But it was pretty much all in the white to yellow range yesterday. There was very little red showing up. So now we're getting a little more pressure back around the planet. Here's the density, solar wind density. You can see we're getting some fluctuations there with waves coming through. You can really see it best on this velocity. You can see the wind speeds up as the colors getting darker. <clears throat> so that, that matches what, what's shown on A, solar wind speeds up. But you see these fluctuations coming through? Now, the solar wind's not fluctuating like that. It's being measured by ACE and DISCOVER. 
see it's pretty steady I mean nothing like what's showing there so this this is what's happening guys and we'll start at the beginning of the run now the thing that stood out to me is well number one all these field lines in front <clears throat> which are coming from the big planet or planets that are <clears throat> somewhere parked in between I'm going to say in between Ace and then L1 Lagrange point and Discover and Earth at this point. Especially with all these gaps we're getting. We're getting data gaps here. Almost two hours. And then we got one here that's about an hour. And then of course they showed you that one on Ace is nine hours. So just note that the field lines, I think polar cap field lines are showing a lot of weakness. Look at all these blue IMF lines coming in from Nemesis. Wow, they're, that's pretty far in. That's well within 20 Earth radii. And each Earth radii is about 4,000 miles, 3,959 miles, which is what these things are measuring. So these are in increments of 5 Earth radii. And normally the bow shocks out around 10. So you can see also on here that the bow shocks being pressed in. Of course, some of it has to do with the solar wind speed up to about 500. <coughs> but I think also normally that wouldn't knock it back that far. And you can see all the energy piling up around the planet here. So I'm getting running out of time, close to 12 minutes. Let me just let this play. We'll go back here and pull this through. So look how weak everything looks to me anyway. So that's why it's all ballooned out. And Nemesis, these field lines are having, wow. I mean, they're, they're really reaching out getting pretty close to grabbing the planet so here's where the high-speed solar wind event starts at 0011 and I'll show you that in a minute on the Z cut this is the Y cut looking straight across the planet equatorial plane but then we'll Keep an eye on these field lines. Well, they, got, they got stronger there, but keep an eye on the ones out in front because look what's going to happen. See them trying to make... See the little failure things coming out there? We've seen those before, and we've seen them come out about this far. But watch what happens here. There they were again. Wow. Now that's crazy. We haven't seen anything like that before. Then look, everything gets blown up. So that's at 11.23. What the heck happened at 11.23? Well, I don't know. I already looked at Ace and Discover, and the phi angle really didn't change <clears throat> that much. So, well, yeah, it did. I mean, look. So the interplanetary magnetic field connection is all broken up at this point. Started breaking up the beginning of today. It ran a little bit strong connection there with Nemesis. But it's in flux right now. So that's why we're getting the waves coming through. And then also we had about an hour event here on High solar wind speed here. It started at 11, about 8.44, I'm going to say, 10.12. Highest what was 14.90 if you're watching these numbers up here. And I hope you click that lower box down here so you can see in all this thing in full screen. But almost out of time. We'll pull this through real quick for you. After that, I think it went back up into the H again, so who knows could have another one starting up but that's how it all looks right now guys these things out in front that's crazy
Running out of time. God bless. Peace. I'm out.